And Dez has not been that guy that Skip fell in love with since 2014, mm. since the non-catch that was ruled a non-catch that Skip thinks was a catch. That everybody in the known world except Shannon Sharp thinks was only those catch. Only those in the Cowboys world oh, okay. think it was, a no, it was a catch. Skip, if you go back, look at the start of 2015 after he got that big contract. He got the contract after the 2014 season. He's 60th in catches. He's 41st in receiving yards per game. He's tied for 29th in touchdowns. So let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip, I put, look here, guy X, receiver, mm -hmm. with those numbers, would you think he'd be a, a franchise wide receiver? Mm. No. No, he wouldn't. He's being paid like one, but go ahead. You see, but and that's the biggest misnomer. People think pay elevate your status as who you are. Yeah. No, uh, Skip, let me ask you. Are you taking him over Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, Antonio Brown, A.J. Green? Right now, I'd take him over Odell because he's no Dell. He's holding out, right? Uh, you do realize your guys mm. missed 10 of the last 33 mm. games. You do realize that, right? I do. Oh, for so a third of the games, he's missed. Yep. But you're going to talk about Odell? I'm, I'm going to talk about the Giants who have scored no more we're, than we're 19 not... points in their last seven games and... Six of those were with Nodell. We, we're, not, we're not talking about Odell. This okay. is about Dez well, Bryant. I know, but you brought him up, so you asked me, and I... Answered. Here's the thing, Skip. Dez Bryant has never been a tactician at running routes. He's a big-body guy mm -hmm. that can body you up and make catches. Yep. But as, and as you get older and injuries start to set in, yep. if you're not technically sound in route running, people start... And you start to give keys. Dez give a lot of keys to his route running. He rounds a lot of things off because he, he doesn't drop his hips like a receiver sh uh, uh, should. Yep. He doesn't run the route tree. He's not good at all the routes in the route tree, which makes him very coverable. And because he's getting older, the injuries, as I said, mm -hmm. injuries are starting to take their toll. He's not the same guy, Skip, as 2014. Now, he had a block of time, 12, 13, 14. He did. He was as good as anybody. Well, but by the way, he led the NFL in touchdown catches over those three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, and he got paid on that. Mm -hmm. He so got paid. He's the second highest cap number guy, seventeen million behind DeAndre Hopkins. Yep. You, he, are you saying he's worth that? What he's getting paid now? Dez, yeah. Dez is on the threshold. I'm gonna name. I can name ten at least that I'd be willing to take before I take Dez Bryant. Mm. And I think you would too. You, if he you, was, you wouldn't have said that in 2014. Skip is 2017. Right? I, know, I got it, but I'm just saying. Well, Skip, you gonna do that for okay. real? Tell I, me when it's my turn. It's not your turn yet. I'm still okay. speaking. Yes, I'm reclaiming my time too because mm -hmm. Skip interrupted me. Mm -hmm. Reclaiming my time. Yep. Me and Miss Maxine Keep Water. Yeah. Skip, he's not that guy anymore, and I don't know if we'll ever see that guy anymore, um, because he's not proficient at running the tree, because he's not a technical route runner. And because of his age and his injury history, he was never a burner. So he can't, it's not like he can fall back. Like Julio, as Julio gets a little, Julio dropping down to run four or five from a four or three is one thing. Mm -hmm. But dropping down from four or five to four, six, eight, four, seven is something entirely different. Mm. And especially if you're not a tactician at running routes. Skip, he's, he, in that block of time, as we mentioned, 12, 13, mm -hmm. 14, he was as good as they come. But he's, a long way mm. removed from that. Mm. And I don't know if we'll ever see it again. Mm. You hope you will never see it again. Skip, why would I hope make that? you eat more cowboy oh, crow. Geez. <laughs> okay, here's my bottom line. I'm going to give you this. Have a lot of injuries cost Dez a little of his speed and a little of his quickness, his suddenness? Yes, I'm going to give you that because I remind you, he fractured his leg in 2010. Then he fractured his foot, the dreaded Jones fact, uh, fracture. And I'm not talking about Jerry Jones. I'm talking about whoever Jones it was who got it named after him. He had that in 2015, had surgery, and then as many do who have had that surgery, he rebroke it and had to have the second surgery on the Jones fracture in 2015. Mm -hmm. Then early last year, game number three, he basically fractured his kneecap. It wasn't, it was hairline, but it was still, it's a fracture, right. you know, and it costs you. It takes a little bit away from a guy who, as you point out, at the combine, he ran four, five at six feet, two inches, 220 pounds. That's, that'll work. When I first started watching him as an Oklahoma State cowboy, 
you want to talk about sudden, you want to talk about electric, you want to talk about punt returner, that's what he was. He was like lethal punt returner at Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to remind you, his first three years in the NFL, he returned 42 punts for the Dallas Cowboys. That was that guy, Mm -hmm. okay? And he also returned um, 16 kickoffs. Wow, that was that guy. So so he could he could fly. Yeah. And he also had this quarterback, may he rest in peace, so to speak, Tony Romo. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Tony. Had a good debut the other day with Jim Nance on CBS. And I was happy because I just want to make sure he's officially <laughs> in that booth. Oh, you, you glad yeah. he had a good I was day. happy for him. I was cheering him on the whole day. It was a very successful debut, and I hope he went home and thought, I got to give up this football dream. It's over. But... Tony Romo and Des Bryant had one of those wavelengths that you can't teach, you can't coach, you, you can't make happen. It just happened right away that Tony loved Des and Des loved Tony, and they had a connection that transcended the play calling. And Tony got comfortable, as you well know, with when in doubt, just throw it, throw it up for 88. Yes. And 88 will go up and snatch it much of the time. Yes. And that's what happened, and that's why he led the league in touchdowns over that three-year period, all the way up through 2014. And the crescendo of that was the play you brought up. It was fourth and two at the Green Bay 32, late in the game, playoff game at Lambeau, into the 2014 season. And when in doubt, what would you do on that play? You know, usually you'd I don't know, you'd run a slant to Cole Beasley or you'd try to get three yards, right? You got that big offensive line, just run it. Just run do it. something, right? Give it to Murray. Okay, but what did Tony Romo do? He shocked me. He, he threw it on a fly pattern to, to 88, right? Mm-hmm. Here it goes on Sam Shields, and he got him one-on-one. I don't know why they weren't doubling Dez on that play. And he obviously caught it, came down, made a football move, and then tried to slam it on the goal line. And they ruled no ca- – how can you rule that's not a catch? Because it wasn't. Oh, please. So, whatever. That would have given them the lead in that game, whether they would have hung on or and not. And Aaron Rodgers would have came yeah. right back down the field and got a touchdown. Yeah, but he had his gimpy calf going on, so maybe he wouldn't have been able to pull it off. I don't think he would have. They had seized momentum in that game. But that was a crescendo. And then in that offseason – Guess who was on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine? That guy was. Mm -hmm. He was it, man. I mean, this was a big deal because he was a new client of Rock Nation. So Des had sort of taken the NFL by storm that year, right? Mm -hmm. And he got his money. He got paid. He got a whole lot of pay. That was, that was a big deal. Five years, 70 million with 45 million guaranteed. That's a big deal. Big. And... I'm not going to be a hypocrite. There's no 2020 hindsight. I was like, go, Jerry, go. Like, I, I was afraid he was going to stonewall him and it was going to force some big holdout and a big mess going into 2015. The mess was actually caused by Tony Romo getting hurt and whatever it was the second game of that year, and then it was just a 4-12 and disaster the rest of the way. But my bottom, bottom line here is, that even though I give you that these injuries have taken a little bit of that electric daz away, He still is highly capable of putting up monster numbers in any given game on any given Sunday, and I believe he will fairly regularly through the rest of this year. Janoris Jenkins has had his number. But I'm going to remind you that this got a little bit swept under the carpet, but in that playoff game against Green Bay last year, end of the year, Mm -hmm. I thought he had a monster game. Mm -hmm. He caught nine balls for 132 yards and two touchdowns. Doesn't that qualify as living up to that contract? Isn't that a big-time game? Yeah. And again, they were behind 21-3 to when it all started, but he caught the, if we could see that, he caught the 40-yard bomb that started the comeback. Here he goes. That'll work. I'm not saying he's blazing, but but it worked. It was 40 yards for a touchdown, and all of a sudden it's 21 to 10. Then he caught another touchdown from seven yards that tied the score at 28. So is that not a Des Bryant game? You got to give him that one, right? Skip, since the start of 2014, he's tied for 30th with the most 100-yard games. Okay, but he was hurt most of last year with that fractured kneecap. Julio has 60. I got it. I got it. Okay, so then what happened Sunday night? What? what from the start, he has not had rapport with the, the young quarterback. Because what happened the first week the young quarterback took over the job? What did he say publicly? I will throw it to Dez when Dez is open. 
because Dez was already complaining, and the kid quarterback, fourth rounder out of Mississippi State, says, you know what? Shut up and show me. Get open, and I'll throw it to you. Right. I love that because it was true because Romo just threw it to him anyway, right? right? So this kid is saying, I got all these other weapons because I got a bunch of other weapons. Mm -hmm. So I'll find the weapon that is open, and if you can demonstrate to me that you can run the proper route and separate, I'll find you.